Good morning. This is one of the last flows I want to share with the video. This is the one which bothered me for the longest time, I have to admit, the asset token flow. It's a very particular flow, and I think it's a unique Salesforce flow. It doesn't exist outside of the Salesforce universe. Nevertheless, I think there is some value in it, and there's some certain use cases where it can be very useful to be used. Nevertheless, anyways, I want to start with the asset token flow now. So, as always, layout. Uh, we got a couple of different actors. So we get, we have an, our IoT device. Oh. Our custom mobile app. For... Our authorization server, which has to be Salesforce. I think there's no other authorization server out there which supports the asset token flow. And yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. And our IoT background, which is not Salesforce. As can be the Salesforce IoT, but not like our normal Salesforce. Okay, so let's get started. We start, oops. We start by our custom mobile app gets somehow it communicates with our author. Just clean it up a little bit to get an access token. Somehow we will define that in detail later. Once it gets that access token, it starts to communicate with the IoT device to get more information than goes back to the authorization server here. And once it's ready here, it goes to the IoT backend. So let me add the arrows again. So the first one is I will not do in full, full detail. Um, this is the where our custom mobile app has to get somehow an access token. This can be done in so many different ways with the refresh token flow, with the user agent flow. I will not get into details there for today. You can watch one of my other videos. So let me just do that. Get access token. Okay. And once we have done that, um, our custom mobile app requests more information from our IoT backend about the metadata, for example, via Bluetooth. Uh, I've got always problems writing Bluetooth. And our device returns information Examples here would be the serial number, the name of the device, other stuff like that. Um, okay. And then our custom mobile app takes this information and creates an actor token. And this is optional signs actor token. The actor token has information like the, about the asset itself. It's technically optional, but I think this is the biggest value about it. Um, it um, contains information like the serial number, the name, the account ID of the current user, or the account ID the asset should be linked to, or the contact ID. And once it has created and signed this actor token, it makes an actor token request, an asset token request to the as it posts to the token endpoint. Endpoint with a response type um, asset token. I'm not 100% sure here what's the response type, but anyway, we have to tell the authorization and uh, the token endpoint uh, that the asset token, what we give it, the token endpoint, we give it the access token, which we got before, and the actor token. 
and a little bit more information. I will not go into detail here. Then Salesforce. Oh, let me copy paste this one. Salesforce in turn verifies the access token. So it knows who I am. Then uh, this is now optional. Create, update the asset. I think this is optional. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, publish. No, then uh, this is not optional. Sorry. Create asset token. This is what we are here for. And the last one is publish asset event registration event. This is um, a platform event which we can react to. So we can create something like a case, an email, SMS, congratulation, your asset was successfully a push notification, whatever. And then we return the asset token via post response. Asset token, and which even more, and which our custom mobile app then in turn again via Bluetooth or whatever means gives to our provides asset token, and this backend then stores the asset token. And this asset token then allows to, this is the trick about it, which took me a long time to figure out. Hopefully this is actually correct, let me know. That the IoT device takes this asset token and for any API request to the IoT backend, which is not Salesforce itself, which can be any custom IoT backend you build. It can also technically be the Salesforce IoT backend, but um, any API request for authorization, it uses the asset token and our backend in turn can verify asset token via public key from Salesforce. So Salesforce um, has an endpoint, it's keys slash IDs or something where you can just, everybody can just get the public key and verify that the asset token truly was created by Salesforce. Um, and then once this is verified, it can actually um, get the content of the asset token as well, like which user initially requested the asset token uh, or what's the asset ID. So what ID um, is the asset to, to get further information from Salesforce and then it does execute, oh, execute the author, um, execute authorization, authorized um, logic, whatever it wants to do, and returns resources if necessary. But as far as I understood the IoT backend, if the IoT backend communicates to the Salesforce, for example, creates a case, it does it in its own name. It does it not in, it, in the name of the IoT device. It's still doing in the name of the backend. But since it has the asset token, there's two advantages. First, it can know that the asset, that the IoT device, IoT device is authorized to do that. And second is the asset token contains information about the IoT device. So the IoT backend knows who this asset token is, uh, this IoT device is. And this already concludes my asset token flow. I think it's a very niche flow. It will not be part of every um, implementation we are going to build. But I think it's very interesting to understand. And let me know if I got it correct. Let me know what's my mistakes there. And see you soon. <laughs>